Let's talk about science, specifically medical science, which often feels like trying to fix a smartphone with a hammer and a prayer. You know the drill. You see a commercial for a new drug, and the list of side effects is longer than a CVS receipt. May cause dizziness, nausea, and the sudden urge to join a traveling circus. It's a mess. And that brings me to our story, which begins, as all great medical breakthroughs do, with a pigeon. Not a real pigeon, mind you, but an imaginary one I just invented. Picture this pigeon, let's call him Walter, trying to deliver a tiny important message to the brain. But the brain security is insane. It's got this thing called the blood-brain barrier, which is less of a barrier and more of a heavily fortified, laser-guarded, moat-surrounded fortress that tells Walter, sorry, no junk mail. Walter the Pigeon represents pretty much every drug ever made that was supposed to help the brain. Scientists spend billions concocting these brilliant little chemical messengers, only for them to get stonewalled at the door like a teenager trying to get into a nightclub with a fake ID made of cardboard and hope. The brain is notoriously picky. It's the ultimate velvet rope venue. It lets in the essentials, sugar, oxygen, the A-listers, but everything else gets affirmed not tonight, pal. This is a huge problem, especially when you're trying to treat diseases that live inside the brain, like multiple sclerosis or depression. You can have the perfect cure, but if it can't get past security, it's about as useful as a chocolate teapot. This is where our hero, or at least our protagonist for the next few minutes, enters the stage. It's a little molecule with a name that sounds like a droid from a low-budget sci-fi movie. Pipe 307. Now, Pipe 307 is different. It's like Walter the Pigeon showing up to the brain's bouncer, not just with a message, but with an all-access VIP pass, a signed letter from the manager, and a basket of muffins. It's a brain-penetrant selective M1 antagonist. Yes, I know, that sounds like gibberish. It's the kind of phrase that makes you nod along during a doctor's appointment while thinking about what you're having for dinner. But stick with me, because what that jumble of words means is actually incredibly exciting. Essentially, scientists at a company called Pipeline Therapeutics, which sounds like they either fix plumbing or are secretly a Bond villain's front, designed this drug with a very specific mission. Its job is to sneak past the brain's overzealous security and then, once inside, to work its magic. And not just any magic, it's aiming to fix something that, for a very long time, we thought was permanently broken. It's targeting the protective coating on our nerve cells, the myelin sheath, which in diseases like multiple sclerosis, gets absolutely shredded. Pipe 307 isn't just trying to manage symptoms, it's trying to get the brain to start rebuilding itself. And that, my friends, is a very big deal. It's the difference between patching a leaky roof and building a whole new one. Before any drug can even dream of helping people, it has to go through the corporate hazing ritual known as clinical trials. The first step is phase one, which is basically the drug's job interview. The main questions are, is it safe? Will it kill you? Does it cause you to grow a third ear? And for a brain drug, there's an even bigger question. Can it even get to the brain? Using advanced imaging, the researchers could actually see pipe 307 entering the brain and binding to the M1 receptors. It did it. It was Walter the Pigeon, message and beak, standing triumphantly in the brain's headquarters. With phase one in the bag, it was time for the main event, the phase two trial for multiple sclerosis. This one is called the VISTA trial, a lovely, hopeful sounding name. It sounds less like a medical experiment and more like a scenic overlook on a postcard. The goal of VISTA is simple, but profound, to see if pipe 307 can actually help repair myelin. In living, breathing human beings with relapsing remitting MS, this is where the myelin meets the axon. They're measuring latency in visual evoked potential, or VEP. They flash a light in front of a patient's eye, then measure how long the signal takes to reach the brain. In MS, that optic nerve is often damaged. The signal is slow. Think Wi-Fi lag during a Netflix binge. The hope, if pipe 307 repairs myelin, the signal will speed up. It's a direct objective measure of wiring repair. Clinical trials can be slow to start. Finding and enrolling patients can take forever. Like assembling IKEA furniture, you think it'll be quick, but six months later, you're staring at a pile of screws and a diagram that looks like a treasure map drawn by a drunk pirate. But Vista was different. Excitement and hope sped enrollment. They finished enrollment in early 2024, a major milestone, ahead of schedule. This rapid enrollment speaks volumes. It shows how desperate patients are for something new. Repair, not just management. People with MS aren't just participants, they are pioneers. The trial runs about six months per patient. That gets us close to results. Top line data expected by end of 2025. This is the moment of truth. Okay, let's pause for a second. We've talked about pigeons, bouncers, and lazy foremen. We've waded through terms like selective M1 receptor antagonists, and you're still here. Frankly, I'm impressed. 
you deserve a medal, or at least a very strong cup of tea. But here's the thing this story is happening right now. As we speak, people are in these trials. Researchers are gathering data, and the future of treatment for diseases like MS and depression is being written. This isn't history. It's a breaking news story unfolding in the slowest possible motion, over months and years, in labs and clinics around the world. This is the point in the show where I'd normally put up a graphic of a sad polar bear and ask you to do something. But since this is an essay, I can't exactly ask you to call your senator about my and repair. What I can ask you to do is to pay attention. Science stories like this often get buried under headlines about celebrities or politicians doing something stupid. But this matters. The journey of a drug like Pipe 307 is a testament to human ingenuity, persistence, and the relentless hope that we can fix what's broken. Subscribe to Science. So, consider this your official invitation to subscribe to this story. Not to me, not to a newsletter, but to the idea of staying informed. Just when you thought Pipe 307 was a one-trick pony, albeit a very impressive, myelin repairing pony, it turns out it has another gig. The same monet receptors it targets for MS are also implicated in cognitive function and, you guessed it, depression. Specifically, major depressive disorder, or MDD. The thinking is that by modulating these receptors, Pipe 307 could help improve the cognitive symptoms associated with depression, the brain fog, the difficulty concentrating, the feeling that your brain is wading through mud. So, alongside the VISTA trial for MS, Pipeline launched another Phase 2 study, Moonlight 1. They are really leaning into these poetic names, aren't they? The Moonlight 1 trial is designed to test Pipe 307 as a treatment for depression. It kicked off in late 2023, and just like its MS counterpart, it's a randomized placebo-controlled study. The goal is to see if the drug can make a meaningful difference for people with MDD who haven't found relief with other treatments. This is a huge deal. While we have many antidepressants, they don't work for everyone, and many don't touch the debilitating cognitive fog that can be one of the worst parts of the illness. A drug that could potentially clear that fog would be a lifeline for millions. So here we are on September 12, 2025, standing at a fascinating crossroads. The VISTA trial for MS is fully enrolled and racing towards its finish line. We are, quite literally, months away from getting the first major data. By the end of this year, we should know if this drug can actually speed up nerve signals in MS patients. It would be a watershed moment. The results are coming, and they could change everything.